Hey. Welcome to another episode of The Wave. My name is Adam. My name is Nick. Welcome back to The Wave, the weekly news and chat show from the world famous Bottom of the Stream podcast. How are you, Adam? I am good. Thank you, Nick. How are you? I'm great. Yeah? Yes. Good are week? You, uh, not bad. Good. It, yeah, it was okay. <laughs> good. I'm glad. I, 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 we had a watch along. We did. And I will start with my apology. Yeah, again. First of all. <laughs> Because I was fully planning to come and join. Okay. And then I was whisked away oh. on a date. Oh, lovely. I've talked, Impromptu date? Yeah. Well, I've talked before, haven't I, about we're trying to do dates yeah. like once a month. It's and nice. It's cute. I like we it. take turns. Have you been or, married a while now? Orchestrating the... How long have you yeah, been married now? A couple of years. 10 years? 11 yeah. years? 12 years? <laughs> a lot of years. And uh, I think it will be... Well, I don't know why I said think. I know it will be... <laughs> Thirteen. Oh my god! This year, twelve and a half. Wow. Uh, so it wasn't my turn. It was, it was my. Also, oh, you've got taken on a date. Yes. Nice. It was my wife incumbent's turn <laughs> to do the date, <laughs> and she said, "We're doing a date tonight. Clear your calendar." So I do apologise to the uh, guys and girls in the Discord. Uh, you're the one that's missing out, mate. Not those. But. Uh, I was presented with an easel and a canvas. <laughs> okay. And as she had the same, and we had to paint. Paint. Anything. Okay. But every 10 minutes we had to swap. Oh, okay. Interesting. Canvai. Canva. Canvai? <laughs> yeah. Let's go with it. Uh, yeah. I I will I'll post a picture of the results in the. Oh, <laughs> that's really it was fun. It was fun. So there's always somebody painting, but you switch it. There's, Every there's ten two minutes, going you on. switch painting. Okay. Yeah, I, I ruined. Obviously, <laughs> <laughs> literally the first brushstroke on after we'd done the first swap. Yeah. So we went on. You know, she started the painting, and I'm carrying on. I was like, "Yeah, I've ruined it straight away." <laughs> Full on paints, like yeah, like not felt tips or anything. No, like proper no painting. No, wow. Uh, she, well, basically, what happened with uh, my wife's painting? Well, the one that she started, so she she hands it over and it's got like uh, it's basically a waterfall. Okay, but it's got so she's done the green at the top, then the blue sort of flowing into the middle of the canvas, and then sort of rocky brownness at the bottom. Got you. I thought, instead of just embellishing that and building it up, first thing I thought was, this needs a bridge. Okay. So I drew a bridge across the waterfall. Yep. Uh, and badly. And and that ruined that. And then <laughs> the next time it came back to it, it, to me, it had a train on it. Oh, right. On the bridge. Yeah. Right. Which then I, I turned then into a circus train uh, with an elephant and a giraffe out the back of it. And drew a big, she was, re- the thing she was most annoyed by, annoyed by was the big top that I drew in the field of the waterfall. <laughs> I've got an uh, image of what I think this picture looks like now, so I need to see the actual And it became like a, a circus train crossing a gorge. Okay. And I, I, she thought she'd recovered it into a sort of, had a Hogwarts vibe going on. Yeah. And I turned it into the train from Dumbo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's fine. From under the bridge down, it ended up looking quite good. Right. Wouldn't... Are you both talented painters? I am not at all. <laughs> no. No. Is she? I I think I'm an ideas man, but then I can't get it out. I'm like that. <laughs> That's exactly how I am. I know what say, I wanted to look like. Yes. Of the two of us, my wife is more... Talented. Talented. Okay. In terms of drawing. And, and then my picture ended up being a a a... An English countryside with some hills oh, and a stream and a couple of houses and some sheep, but the sheep were massive, like <laughs> way out of scale because I did the sheep. <laughs> oh, it sounds like a lovely oh, evening. Did, was it there, was quite. Was fun. there food involved? Just, just some snacks. Just snacks. Yeah. Were the kids yeah. out? Uh, they were in bed. Nice snacks. And well, have they seen the pictures, resulting pictures? Yes. Thoughts? They both said they were good. Okay. But they're not to be trusted. That's true. My mum. I happened to pop in a couple of days later and actively said without prompting, I like those pictures. I really like the train. <laughs> so maybe there was some merit in the circus train. You've done well. I will. I don't have a picture to hand, but I will take. I'd love to see I them. I will take them and put them in the Discord. Sweet. Okay. 
Right, so, so everyone can. Stay. Can you put them in before this episode comes out so people don't with no context? Yeah, so just people don't know. I'll what do, do it when I get home. Cool. Okay. And cool. then people are gonna have to wait four days <laughs> for the context. Sweet. Uh, how about you? How's your week been? Good. Yeah, not too bad. I suppose at this point I could talk about the watch along that you missed. Oh yeah. Should we do that in this sure, order? Sure. Why not? There's, there's no rules. You know. Um, so yeah, we every for those of you who don't know every mon- Sunday. Uh, not every Sunday. I keep saying every Sunday. It's not every Sunday. It's, it's supposed to be the first Sunday of the month, but it's turned into a Sunday in the month. Uh, we do a watch along in the Discord, so I'll yeah. stream a movie through various means, and people can watch it, and we all watch it together, and we chat and commentate and talk about these movies. Uh, we've recent in recent months decided started to do double headers. So the last well, a lot two of or these, three, these they're movies, quite short. Yeah, I can be quite short. So. Uh, We've been doing two. So we did two movies on Sunday night. We started off our double header, our double bill, with a little movie called Clownado. Okay. I have actually heard of Clownado. Clownado. Yeah. Which is, I guess, a sp- it's, t- it's obviously massively inspired by Sharknado. Sure. However, shit. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> so, and I, you know me, I love bad movies. I do, yeah. There was no merit to this one okay. at all. Um, Were they all t- bad clowns? To, yes. So okay. to try and give you a brief synopsis of what had happened, if I can remember, because I've tried to blank it out of my mind. Um, a clown's girlfriend was having an affair with another member of the circus. Okay. So the clown come in, comes in and kills the guy that he's having the affair with. She's having the affair Got with. Got yeah. She then wants revenge on her clown boyfriend. So she goes to the... I guess, fortune teller for the circus. I thought there would be some kind of curse yeah. involved. So she puts a curse on the cl- all of the clowns. All clowns. All, cl- all of the clowns from this particular circus. Okay. So there's only six clowns in this movie. Um, which goes wrong and gives uh, seemingly gives these clowns the ability to travel by tornado. Oh, right. So they're not just like sucked off no, in a tornado. They are not sucked off by a tornado. They are using this tornado to transport to themselves, transport themselves oh, okay. and... Also appears to have made them all savage killers. Right. And also possibly maybe immortal, but not. Okay. <laughs> because they keep surviving stuff and then they very easily defeat it towards the end of the right. movie. They didn't go for the comedy aspect of clowns in a tornado, which sounds ridiculous. Cause mm. what, how, what else would you go with? They tried to go with gross out. Okay. And like hardcore gore on zero budget. Yes. They were clearly just delving their hand because they kept like ripping people's insides out sure. with their hands and they were just delving into bowls of jam and jelly <laughs> it looked like jelly <laughs> and then there's a very i'm not going to give the ending away but there's a very bad ending um so that was terrible so okay. all all however many of us there were hated that movie terrible movie so and that's on for an hour and 45 minutes oh wow which is a long time yeah. for a bad movie about clowns in a tornado so we then Made the decision to, it was quite late. It wasn't late, but it was late, too late to do another movie of that length. Yeah. So I was like, let's try and find one that's about an hour long. Because uh-huh. a lot of them are. So we found a movie called The Scrotum. Okay. <laughs> which is a, about a killer scrotum. Brilliant. So this, it's an hour long. It's an, I think it's an hour and three minutes long. So this guy goes, he's camping with his girlfriend. Um, she refuses to sleep with him because he has not adequately shaved and prepared his okay. man area so he goes into this lake to prepare his man area <laughs> unfortunately it's also just been polluted with toxic waste oh man i hate it when that happens yeah so he manages to get some toxic waste in his man area yeah and then he goes back to his girlfriend and then suddenly he starts feeling very ill um it's really having lots of stomach issues and decides the only way you can claw this is by cure this is by chopping off his male parts. Okay, fine. <laughs> Obviously. So he, he saws he hacks them off. This kills him. Yeah. As it would. Yeah. And then his scrotum goes on a murderous rampage. Fantastic. And it's really good. It's just a massive ball bag it's running a, around. Sometimes it's massive, sometimes it's just okay. not. Um It's got it's very, it sounds really weird to say, but it's very Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Okay. There's huge... I'm pretty sure it's even the same house. <laughs> um, but it's a, it was... I'm, lo- I'm Everybody keeps telling me it was really good. 
I think it was really good compared to what we'd just watched. Yes, it might be. You were on a curve. Ross was gone 7 out of 10 with it, which is insane. Because <laughs> it wasn't that good. Um, but it was it was much better than Clownado. So we were, we were on a curve. Um, you and ended it, with a win. And it resolves... It's better than anything any of the other films we've seen recently because the last watch along we did was also yeah. awful. Yeah. But yeah, if you've got if you've got access to Amazon Prime, it's free. Go and check out The Scrotum, but don't check out Clownado. <laughs> There's also a sequel to The Scrotum, but it doesn't appear to have been released. Oh, it's it's on IMDb. On there's the, no reviews on the on shelf it. somewhere. It's, it's on IMDb as if it's out there, yeah. but there's no reviews on IMDb and it isn't streaming anywhere. Oh, interesting. So I don't know if it ever. Or maybe just got released in one cinema or something. I don't know, but it's it's out, but it's unavailable. Didn't see the light of day, no, generally. Didn't appear to. Interesting. Mm, absolutely. Anyway, there's 10 minutes of inane waffle to start an episode. Never inane. No. So, should we do the question of the week? Let's do the question of the week. I, I do have one. And I, I'm really interested to see your approach on this. Okay. So, you have been blessed with great fortune. Okay. And you have been told that when you are ready yeah. to receive the fortune, so okay. you can decide when. Yeah. That is very important. Right. You will on day one be giving be given a penny. Right. Every day after it the money given to you will double okay. in value. So two P the next day, then four, four P, eight P, etc. etc. Yeah. However, the money coming to you will stop the instant you spend any money. Oh, it's almost as millions. Anything. Yeah. How will you prepare? How will I prepare? And what would your strategy be? So I can't if I spend any of this money that I'm getting. No, any money. Any money. Correct. Oh, okay. That's like, that's right. So I, as soon as I spend any money, I get no more money. Correct. So. First, I guess I need to do the math on how much money is enough money. Correct. And how long will it take me to get to enough money? Does that make sense? Yes. Do you want some context? If you yes. if you did a month, yeah. So let's uh, say thirty one days, yeah. You'd be up at about ten point seven million pounds. Okay, which is enough. That's interesting. You can't spend anything from anywhere, so you've got a lot of prep to do. I can't, have I got to stop all my bills going out? Yeah, that's spending money. Right. Okay. So I have to default on all of my bills. Yeah. Cancel all my direct debits for yep. a month. I'm going for a month. I think 10 million is enough. So 31 days is your 31 target. 31 days is my target. Because 30 days is only 5 million. Uh huh. But 31 is 10 million. But yeah. then 32 is 20. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it works. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, this is getting interesting. Then 33 is 40. Oh. There's good, you have to have a cut off. I I have to be able to stop. So you somewhere. could you could stock up food wise. Yeah, it's food's fine. So you'd I have can, to do I all can that. Do prep. a food shop before I start this off. How long until you like mortgage companies chasing you? That's that's I, the sort of yeah. thing you've got to because obviously the money's there straight away. But w- when you get to that certain point, payment you, holidays are a thing, aren't they? Yeah. I think you can't go much more than a month. You got your gas, electric getting cut off. Yeah. After much, not much more than a month, I presume. I, f- oh, interesting. I think what I'd do. You couldn't drop, you, you you couldn't, you could fill your car up, but then you couldn't refill it. No, but what I could do is go on holiday to an all-inclusive resort for a month. And then when I get home, I've got all my money back. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much this holiday costs me. Does, if you I haven't go, got the money. But if I can go I can go into debt for that because I can pay it back yeah, when true. I get back. And then I can just lie on a beach for a month. You could do, yeah. With all my food paid for. Yeah. As long as you've done all your boring I've got to cancel all my direct debits. Yeah. Your internet, Netflix, everything. If I'm gonna you be ha- a nightmare setting it back up, but then you'd be that rich you could get someone to do it for you. Exactly. Probably. And you've got the the problem you've got is you need to be able to cut it off. I not think, oh, I'll go one more day. Yeah. I'll go two more days. I'll double my money. That's the issue. Yeah, because when, when you're into that month, after a month, you're into the real you, big That's numbers. when you get big money. So yeah. You've got to decide 10 million is enough or 20 million is enough. How much money is enough money? Yeah, great question. 10 million, 20, 40, 80. So by day 35, you're at 160 million-ish. 
I think you could do 35 days if you practice. I think 35, that sounds like a nice round. <laughs> You've already number. changed. I know. I've already gone up from 31. You already changed. I'm going to book myself five days. 35 days in a luxury spa, all-inclusive resort. You can't have any extras. I can't have any extras. I can, I can do with Could that. You, if you put it on a tab, have you technically spent the yeah, money? Yeah, you have spent yeah, money, you haven't have, you? Yeah. I'm cancelling all my bills, booking this holiday. Press and go when you Press and go. arrive at the resort. I'm going to stay there like for at least 31 days. Um, if I'm enjoying myself, I might make it longer. Okay. I think that's, I think I've broken it. <laughs> because, but the, you can't go too long. I can't go for like six months because my mortgage isn't being paid. Yeah, you'll, yeah. But then, by the time six months, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna be a multi billionaire. Who yeah, cares yeah, if my yeah. mortgage has been paid? You're the richest man in the world. Who cares about this place at that point? Yeah. But yeah, you have to cut it off, otherwise yeah. you're going. How insane. much money do you need? Yeah, exactly. How much money is too much money? I'm cutting it off uh, 35 days, which I think, if my maths is right, is 160 million. Yeah, it's, it's around that ballpark. Yeah. I think. 35 days in a luxury hotel somewhere, please. <laughs> Am I right? I think so. As long as you, yeah, as long as you can, like I say, you you can make that booking and you've got the the means to, even if you're I don't need crediting any, it or whatever. What else do I need other than food when I'm on holiday? I don't need anything, do I? No, as long as you've packed enough sun cream clothes, and yeah. clothes, yeah. Yeah, because I can't go to a laundrette or no. anything. So I need enough, to, I'd have to take all my clothes. Yeah. Well, you, you just live in the pool, wouldn't you? It's not yeah. in trunks. Or, the same short trunks. Yeah. I'll get my speedos out. Yeah. I'd do that for what as if long you got, as I can. What if you got too... Do you think you'd get too relaxed and then, like, you might be on a walk and, oh... oh just buy an just ice cream. buy an ice cream and that's it. <laughs> as long as that happens after about day 20, you're still going to be all right. You fucked it up. Knowing my luck, I'd have forgotten to cancel one bill. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'd be You've fucked. got to be quite <laughs> fine tooth comb about this. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the answer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's as good as any. Yeah. Yeah. You you need enough that it's, you know, setting all that stuff back up. Yeah, just it's, pay somebody it's, to It's a minor inconvenience by the time you get back. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Good answer. Good question. Yeah. This is an interesting one. It was indeed. Right. We need to get on to Netflix news. We've been waffling for nearly 20 minutes. Oh, that's fine. So it's a really big news week as well. <laughs> okay. There's, Great. There's, okay. There's a lot Prepare of for a long wave, everybody. To go through. So. To be fair, I've done a bit that I'd planned for the end at the beginning, so we're, we're good. So that's fine. Yeah. So the first piece of news, which was, well, we talked about last week. We did talk about rumored. this last week. Yes. Well, the, the, this has gathered some speed quickly because this week it has been announced that Netflix will indeed broadcast two live NFL games on Christmas Day. Okay. They won that race. They did. Uh, that is for this Christmas coming, 2024, but they have also got at least one game on Christmas Day in 2025 and 2026. Okay. Uh, Netflix Chief Content Officer Bella Bajera said, Last year, we decided to take a big bet on live. We are tapping into massive fandoms across comedy, reality TV, sports, and more. There are no annual events, sports or otherwise, that compare with the audience NFL football attracts. We are so excited that the NFL's Christmas Day games will be only on Netflix. They have also noted that this is a global deal. Oh, so everybody's getting them. He, well, it says a global deal. Okay. Uh, we, we will see, because I would have thought there'd be a lot of local contracts that may... Um, make that difficult but that's that's what uh, it says on to the two games for anyone who's interested this year okay will be the kansas city chiefs versus the pittsburgh steelers and the baltimore ravens versus the houston texans okay so some decent games yeah that's that's really interesting i think next year is going to be big for netflix live yeah i think there's just uh, there's going to be a lot of it that's the, the the push is just going to be insane because you've got receiver coming, which is their follow up to the quarterback yep. series, uh, and just yeah, it's, it's going to be all. I've I've read something today actually. If you are a NFL fan in the states, yeah, if you wanted to watch every single 
game or access to be able to watch every single game live, yeah. you need to pay one thousand six hundred dollars. Wow! Across all oh, the across various the streaming, because the rights are so fragmented. Wow, that's crazy, isn't yeah. it? You need like Peacock, NFL Plus, Netflix, the cable package. Wow. Um, yeah. It just makes it harder for fans to care. Yeah. Why should fans care if they have to pay that much? Hmm. Hmm. But yeah, big moves from Netflix. Big, yeah, big moves. That is a big move. And there's a lot of sports news. Okay. There is a lot of sports news related to Netflix because they have also confirmed that. Uh, we are getting a trio of Olympic-based sports documentaries. Three of them? Yes. One of which, uh, Netflix has par- partnered with the International Olympic Committee. Okay. Uh, one series will follow gymnastics superstar Simone Biles as she prepares for the upcoming Olympic Games in Paris. Right. And then... There will be a second batch of episodes which will be filmed during the Olympics, following okay. her. So it really looks like following her career competition. For the next few months. Uh, what if she does badly? That'd be terrible. There will be another documentary following the U.S. basketball team. All right. On their quest for a gold medal. Yep. And they have already ordered a second series of Sprint, which I think we've mentioned before, which will follow track and field athletes in the States. Uh, the first series, which hasn't yet been released, right. uh, focuses on them, again, pr- training and qualifying for world championships. Uh, that starts in July. But the second season has already been commissioned, which will follow them at the Olympics. Right. Interesting. So, yes. I always seem to get involved in the. I like the Olympics. It's just a chance to watch something different, isn't it? It is. I think, yeah, it's good background watching. Yeah, it's good to just have on when you're doing yeah. something else. But I, I like, like the watching... Winter Olympics. Well, yeah, that's I do even quite, yeah. more crazy. Yeah, you get all sorts of weird stuff. Watching the skeet shooting today and that sort of <laughs> stuff. Cross country skiing. I the, more sports news. Okay, particularly <laughs> golf news. <laughs> right now, we know that Adam Sandler is a big sports guy. We do. He's obviously got a humongous deal with Netflix. Yep. And it has been announced this week that one of his next movies for Netflix is a golf movie. And not just that. It is the, I may be long awaited. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. I'm Sequ- sure some people have been Sequel waiting. to Happy Gilmore. Wow. Because a script, Adam Sandler has handed in a script for Happy Gilmore 2. Nearly 30 years Happy Gilmore it is. That's Crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. Uh, Christopher McDonald, who plays Shooter McGavin, yeah. shared a story that uh, that um, he met Adam Sandler a few months ago. Uh, and at that meeting, Sandler pulled out the first draft. Oh, right. So Happy so Gilmore too. Come and have a look at this. Uh-huh, yeah. But yeah, it's on its way. I'm sure a lot of people will be very happy about that. I mean, I've not seen it for many, many no, years. No, I haven't. Long time. Probably but since it came out. It's it. I, it's up there for yeah, some yeah. of the films. I think it's highly regarded as his best, if not one of the best. Big news. That is big news. Also, in the terms of uh, fictional golf. <laughs> a very niche subject. <laughs> Netflix have announced that Will Ferrell will star in an upcoming comedy series for them called G-O-L-F. Golf? Yeah. <laughs> right. Apparently you've got to say in capitals. Why? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, will Ferrell will star and it is the, uh, the series has been created and written by Rami Youssef, who you may recognise, uh, who was, he co-starred in Poor Things uh, end oh, of, yes. at the end of last year. Yeah. Uh, he was uh, he was the student of uh, Willem Dafoe's character was, yes. in in Poor Things. Uh, Ryan Johnson is an executive oh, wow. producer, big name for golf. Golf, uh, which will be a ten episode comedy, ten episode comedy series. Yeah, I wonder why it's called golf in capital letters. <laughs> I wonder if it stands for something. Maybe 
Maybe that will will all to be revealed. I'm sure it will. Also news this week that Netflix has picked up the three body problem to its conclusion. Well, oh, right. Okay. But they have not said that this is season two. Right. And they have not said what to its conclusion means, <laughs> which is okay. quite interesting. That is quite interesting. Uh, they announced yesterday they had renewed three body problem, but did not refer to it as a season two, but as an ordering of additional episodes. Right. I just why? What's yeah, the what's why? The why, big deal here? why are we messing around with the wording? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. The press release said the exact number of seasons and or episodes will be announced at a later date. That's a really weird way of going around for you. Yeah, David Burnoff and DB Vice, obviously the showrunners released a statement saying that they are excited that they get to tell the story through to its epic conclusion. They had previously said, like, back in the day, that this was like a three or four season show. Right. So, I'm not sure what's going on here. No, that's very strange. Uh, but it's, it's, I mean, there's three novels, I think, to get through. Right. But, yeah. I, I guess they I just keep making the, it till people start watching it. What the plan's going to be here. <laughs> so, Hmm. Uh, they hmm. they said, yeah, in their statement, we're thrilled that we get to tell this story through to its epic conclusion. Ever since we read the last page of the magnificent trilogy of novels, we hope we'd be we hoped we'd be able to bring the audience to the end of the universe with us. Here we go. Okay. Well, but fair. We'll just keep going until it's done. It's just, it's just a very weird way to phrase it. So it yeah, is, yeah, you're getting it all, don't worry. No, we just don't know how many that... It yeah. could be one episode where you're yeah. just getting loads. It feels like nobody's decided what's actually going on. I think I'm sure the plan will come together. Yeah, I'm sure it will. Now, we knew that the Netflix ad-supported tier had been going well. Yep. Back... Uh, so this, for this time last year, Netflix said 5 million subscribers to that tier. Yep. At not long after launch. In as, as recent history as November 2023, so yep. six months ago, Netflix said that this was now up to 15 million. Okay. They have said this week that the number of subscribers on the ad-supported tier is now 40 million Wowzers. subscribers. I mean, didn't they stop the non-ad-supported basic package? It, uh, they certainly have over here in this yeah. country. I don't know so if that's that a That might be why. <laughs> it's not growing. Uh, it's just you're just putting people on it. <laughs> they have also said that over 40% of new signups are for the ad-supported plan. Okay, which means 60% aren't. Yes, true. <laughs> true. Uh, and Netflix also announced that they are building an in-house advertising technology platform. Well, that was going to come at some point. They're not, they I weren't think they sourced add, it out to Microsoft. Microsoft doing it, weren't they? they weren't going to do that forever. Yeah, but they are taking it all in-house. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Look, I mean, we're, it's really not going to be long now. We, Netflix has now got, it's, well, it's bringing its ads in-house. It's bought an animation studio, special <laughs> effects studio. It's just a... An industry unto itself. It is, yeah. Point. There'll become a point where everything's just made by Netflix. Yeah. So it's a juggernaut that will not be stopped. Keep going, you're on a roll. Sure. Uh, news also released by Netflix this week that we have a date for Back in Action, which is the comeback movie of Cameron Diaz. Yeah, she's coming back. Coincidentally, in a movie called Back in Action. Yes. November the 15th. Okay. We will see this. Uh, she will star with Jamie Foxx in a, this action comedy where they play former CIA agents who gave up their globe-trotting lifestyle to start a family. Uh, a decade on, the former agents are thrust back into the world of espionage when their cover is blown. Uh, this will be directed by Seth Gordon, who was the chap behind Horrible Bosses... And the identity thief. Okay. Uh, Some nice photos of um, on set action here. Yes, this I think this is this has been delayed slightly because this 
is the movie Jamie Foxx was filming when he was taken ill last oh, year. Oh, yes, he was. Yes, you're right. And which has all, well, yeah. quite rightly, has been very yeah. hush hush on sort of what happened to him yeah, there. Kind of Although it was quite serious from yes. uh, all accounts. But yes, November, we can see that movie. Sweet. On Netflix. Netflix has also commissioned a new show from very busy man, Kevin Williamson. Right. Who is all set to direct the next Scream movie. He is. Uh, they have also greenlit from him a family drama series called The Waterfront. Okay. Because not a lot... Of, well, I suppose a lot of people do know, but they may have forgotten because that's how time works. <laughs> Kevin Williamson was also the guy who invented Dawson's Creek. I wasn't... I did not know that. Did you not? I did. Well, maybe I did, but I had... I, well, exactly. It was also so I said in the it. forefront of my mind. <laughs> okay. So he has form in this... I knew that he would, like, I knew that he put his hand in many different genres. The official synopsis says, The waterfront is inspired by true events and dives into the flawed Buckley family and their attempts to retain control of their crumbling North Carolina fishing empire. Okay. Uh, This drives them to increasingly dangerous means to keep themselves afloat. See what they did there. (laughs) Do see what they did there. Uh, yeah, he, uh, Dawson's Creek, Scream, The Vampire Diaries, responsible for all of those. Wow. And, uh, yeah. Busy man. I was coming back to this. Uh, apparently, Variety Notes, as well as the upcoming Scream movie, he's also developing a new adaptation of Rear Window. Oh, wow. Uh, and a reboot slash rejig of The Game, which was the 1997 David Fincher movie, which I think he wrote originally. Oh, right, okay. Uh, it's the Michael Douglas one. Have you ever seen it where he has to... Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Long, long, long time ago. The Rear Window news is quite exciting, though. That's my favourite Hitchcock movie. What a busy guy. I've got the Rear Window poster right behind your I head. I know, yeah. I love Rear Window. Next. Officially official news that has been rumoured for some time. We talked about Nicolas Cage wanting to get... He he'd Remember, he did that interview saying he wanted to get into TV. Yeah, he was retiring from movies. Because he'd, he'd discovered Breaking Bad. Yeah. <laughs> 15 years 15 after. 15 years later. Yeah. Well, it's happening. Uh, Nicolas Cage is on board a new live action series for Amazon Prime Video. And it's going to excite a lot of people because he is reprising his role as Spider-Man Noir. Wow. In a live action show? Yeah. Ooh. How, that could be absolute batshit. <laughs> uh, in the States, it will be it will debut on MGM Plus uh, and then globally on Prime Video. Oh, that's actually really exciting. Uh, it is. It really is. He, they could do so much with that. They, literally, there's no rules there. Uh, Vernon Sanders, who is the head of television for Amazon MGM Studios, said, Expanding the Marvel Universe with noir is a uniquely special opportunity, and we are honoured to bring this series to our global Prime Video customers. The extremely talented Nicolas Cage is an ideal choice for our new superhero, and the, accompl- and the accomplished producing team with Phil Miller, uh, Phil Lord, Christopher Miller, Amy Pascal, and the incredible team at Sony is dedicated to expanding the franchise in the most authentic way okay the the whole spider-man rights thing is really weird isn't it yes you just got to keep turning it out <laughs> so they don't go back to marvel yeah <laughs> it's really strange so it's going to end up on amazon and that feels like it should be all over disney plus yes yeah. <laughs> it's just strange yeah. good that that is exciting oh i'm really looking forward to that the hollywood reporter is saying this week mm-hmm. that Uh, Again, if you're in the States, this follows on from from a similar thing we talked about last week, that you will shortly be able to sign up to Streamsaver. Streamsaver? Yeah. What's that? Uh, (laughs) Streamsaver is a product that bundles together Peacock, Netflix, and Apple TV+. Plus. All in one package? Yes. Okay. Uh, It will be available to anyone who uses Comcast. Right. As their provider in the States. Uh, Brian Roberts, who is the CEO there, says these three products will come at a vastly reduced price to anything in the market today. Wow. And will be available to all our customers. 
Uh, Comcast is owned by NBC Universal. Uh, yeah, shots fired after last week with the, the Disney Plus Max bundle. Yeah. It's streaming wars. If they're going to start the warring and joining forces with each other, that can only be a good thing for all of us. Yeah. Imagine how big the budget for Zack Snyder's next movie will be. <laughs> but you'd only get like, you'd get 10 minutes of it on Netflix. Yeah. Then you have to switch over to Half Peacock. an hour of it on Peacock. <laughs> Hmm, there's really this is a really interesting like where is this world going right who's now? gonna get in bed with who yeah because it seems like we're heading in this direction and and yeah how's that going to be reflected over here in the yeah. rest of the world yeah because if it's a success in america it will pretty quickly roll out we've seen how quick things roll yeah. out these days okay so let's continue our game from last week okay Except you've already looked at some of the pictures. Sorry. But no, that's fine. The... <laughs> Didn't know I wasn't supposed to click on it. <laughs> I know, I should have said that before. We talked last week about some of the rumoured stars for Bear Hunt. Okay. The Bear... If it helps, I have no idea who one of those people is. Okay, the okay. Bear Grylls, um, you know, yep. chasing celebrities. Yeah, Bear, bear Grylls is going to start hunting celebrities. So, there are now, uh, according to The Sun, a full lineup. Confirmed. Okay. Of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Twelve celebrities. Ooh. So I think there was four or five on the list last week. Rumored. Yes. All of those that are on that list are on. Are confirmed. They're all confirmed. So that was. So we'll we'll knock off Mel B. Yeah. Boris Becker. Shirley Ballas. Shirley okay. Ballas. Danny Cipriani. Okay. And. They were the ones from last week. I think. I think that was it. Yeah, I think yeah. it was. Uh, but there there are seven more. Okay. Well, I've just seen a picture of one who I recognised. Okay, who was that? Joe Thomas. Correct. Yeah. From the in between us. Yes. And he'd be good. Other things. Uh, I whoever that lady was, I have no idea who that is. I think she's a daytime TV presenter. Okay. Uh, Steph McGovern. I think she does like a lunchtime show on Channel Four. Right. And she, I think she used to be like BBC News and. I'm at work uh, at lunchtime. Yes, yeah, I, I believe that's who that is. Okay. Uh, so we got what? There's another, another five. Yeah, there's another pop star. Another pop star who I. I'm too old for this to this to have been. So in it's my... a younger pop star. But yeah, but they're not. They've not been around for a, a long time. Female. Yes. Nineties. No. Two no, thousands. Yeah. British. Yeah. I, I, I have no idea. It's someone from the Saturdays. <laughs> Frankie Bridge. No, Una. That's <laughs> Frankie's in one, isn't he? Una. 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 What's my name? <laughs> Um, there's a lady at work called Una and we always sing that to her I think you'll only know one more okay I think you'll I genuinely I think you'll only know one more so uh, I would say reality TV no, yeah we won't know person no this is the one you will know oh okay uh, it was a big well I would say at the time it was one of the biggest reality home decor shows changing rooms yeah Lawrence Wayne Bowen. Correct. <laughs> oh, really? Him of the big cuffs. No way. Uh, he is... That's going for older people in this show. <laughs> he is going to be on this show. Uh, Leonie Anderson. No, don't know. Uh, apparently she is a former Victoria's Secret model. Yeah, that's why I don't know. Uh, oh, actually, I, I recognise uh, this guy. Cola Bikini from Ted Lasso, Top Boy and Black Mirror. Oh, okay. That seems a bit more... Age appropriate. Uh, and Lottie Moss. Any relation to Kate Moss? Yes. Oh! <laughs> the Daughter. Sun, this doesn't describe that as famous for being Kate Moss's sister. Sister? So, so she's older as well, then. Yeah, I think that's all of them. I think I've covered them all. Um, it's a strange lineup. Yeah. I would. Can't wait to see them get hunted to I'd, the death. I'd like to say I've got no in interest in that as a reality show, but. The thought of Bear Grylls hunting down Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen is actually quite exciting. Yeah, but I don't know if Bear Grylls is on the verge of being weird. Bear Grylls is weird. Yeah, no, but did you see last week he baptised Russell Brand in the Thames? No. Yeah. Actually? Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Russell Brand has like, decided to go Christian since yeah. being accused of all the rapes. Yeah. Well, he, he's, he was baptised last week. Bear Grylls baptised him. Right. In the actual River Thames. Is Bear Grylls qualified to do that? Apparently so. I mean, he's the head of the Cubs. <laughs> 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 like, Honestly, I'm not making that up. Just going to check I it out. I have not heard that. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, Bear Grylls has gone weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, life is a weird thing, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. Things just keep happening. So, movie news. Okay, let's do get back to the real world. Pierce Brosnan. Oh, yeah. Of well, this parish. Yes, yeah, yeah. He has signed up for a uh, a new movie called Wolfland. Wolfland? That's a werewolf movie. Okay. And he's going to be directed by his son. Oh, right. So who got who the job? That's what I want to know. <laughs> That's not a good picture of Pierce Brosnan. Uh, no. Oh, wow. I thought at first glance out of the corner of my eye without my glasses on, I'm like, is that Jeremy Clarkson? It does look a bit like Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> Piers Brosnan will star in Wolfland, which will be directed by Sean Brosnan. I didn't know Piers Brosnan had a son. Well, he has. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, it's up for sale, basically, at the Cannes Film Festival. Which oh, that's like this weekend, I think. Just begun. Soon. Now. Uh, the movie is described as an epic odyssey following mm. a young teenager... Who, That's when not his, <laughs> who, when his sister is viciously attacked and showing signs of a transformation, leaves his small village in search of a legendary werewolf hunter who can reverse the gruesome curse. Uh, he finds the legend slumped against a bar. He takes the kid's money and agrees to hunt down the phantom monster, only for them both to find themselves in a deadly whirlwind of carnage. <laughs> That's a great name for a film. Yeah, it is, The actually. Deadly Whirlwind of Carnage. I'd watch that. Uh, that implies there that it's going to be like a period piece. Just the implication from that synopsis. I yeah. got that. But it, 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 might, it might not be. But. Do, you know, do you want to know what Sean said about working with his dad? Of course. Uh, it, it gets weird straight away. Right. He, he says, I'm excited to be working with Pierce. They called his dad Pierce? Yeah. Oh, that's weird. It would be less weird if you said dad, wouldn't he? Or my I'm father. Working, yeah, I'm looking forward to working with my he dad. said, I'm excited to be working with Pierce on a film that aims to redefine the werewolf subgenre. Uh, we'll craft a werewolf transformation to rival the iconic scenes from an American werewolf in London. And we are thrilled about the potential impact of an expanding wolfland universe. <laughs> oh, everything's got to have a universe. <laughs> it is weird that he called his dad by his first name. But if Pierce Brosnan had said, I'm looking forward to working with Sean, yeah. that's not weird. No. So isn't the English language strange? Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of my yes. point there. Yes, you've <laughs> completely valid. Yeah. Completely valid. Yeah. I mean, if it I called my weird. dad by his first name, he would hit yeah, me in the face. it would not go down well. <laughs> I, when I was a teenager, I used to do that just to wind him up. <laughs> if, if he'd like annoyed me or something, I'd call him by his first name. But he didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's weird. I don't think I. It's different it. when you're at work. He's at Sean's at work, I suppose. Isn't True. It? I used to work with my dad there, and I still call him dad. Yeah. Don't know. Weird. Father. Hello, father. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm up for a Pierce to Brosnan werewolf movie. Why not? Sequel news. Sequel news. Uh, Roadhouse two. Roadhouse 2? Yeah, confirmed. I've not seen the first one yet. No, me neither. Uh, we said, didn't we, weeks ago, it was one of Prime Video's biggest hits yeah. ever in terms of movers. And yes, they have confirmed a sequel is on the way. Jake Gyllenhaal is back on board. Okay. Uh, Prime Video said, with nearly 80 million viewers to date, Jake Gyllenhaal is set to reprise his role as Elton Dalton. Uh, Elwood <laughs> I was Dalton. Say, I can't, it can't be read. called Elton Dalton. <laughs> <laughs> in a roadhouse sequel cool I mean yeah if you, if it's your biggest movie of all time of course you're going to fairly cheap to make yeah I would imagine so he's a he's, Gyllenhaal's already done all the training now he doesn't need to learn to fight again sure nobody knows cool I'm sure some people will be happy about that I don't it can seem to get mixed reviews that some people seem to really like it but yeah I mean I, I, some didn't. I, I haven't you seen can it. take it too seriously can Have you, you? no I haven't well, it feel, yeah, it feels like it's a. It'd be a potential Saturday night. Brain, and a Magnum movie. Yeah, brainless movie. Uh, final piece of news, and I think we have to mention this really because uh, this guy is 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 you know one of the innovators of the sort of movie that we love, and that okay. is the the passing this week of Roger Corman, the yeah. legendary B movie filmmaker, 
uh, who passed away at the age of 98. Wow, good innings. Yeah. Directed, produced, and starred in over 500 films wow. over an eight-decade career. That's insane. An eight-decade career doing anything is insane. Yes. His family released a statement saying, it's with profound st- sadness and boundless gratitude for his extraordinary life that we remember our beloved husband and father, Roger Corman. He passed away on May the 9th at home in California, surrounded by his family. Wow. Uh, just a tremendously influential guy. Uh, started working as a messenger boy for 20th Century Fox in 1950. Wow. Rising through the ranks. Uh, and, yeah, just just uh, a, a, an incredibly influential uh, filmmaker he sold his first script in 1954, uh, The House in the Sea, which was a <laughs> noir movie, uh, and his first own production was a 1954 sci-fi movie, The Monster from the Ocean Floor. He likes oceans back in the 50s. Yeah. Uh, and later that year, 1954, end of 1954, he released a racing thriller. Okay. Called The Fast and the Furious. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's where that came from. <laughs> I knew that franchise had been going for a long time. I didn't know it's been going that uh, Little Shop of Horrors, the original one starring Jack Nicholson. Oh, yeah. That was one of his. How was it? Uh, shot it in two days. Wow. That's some fast work. Yeah. Uh, a slew of Edgar Allan Poe adaptations, including several that have been uh, entered to the uh, National Film Registry. In the States, so The House of Russia, The Pit and the Pendulum, uh, just hundreds and hundreds, hundreds of and things. hundreds. Uh, he helped launch the careers of Joe Dante, Ron Howard, Jonathan Demme, uh, yeah. wow. um, Martin Scorsese, Francis Ford Coppola, James Cameron, all started off working on Roger Corman movies. And that's your legacy, isn't it? Jeez. Yeah. He... Paved the way for Bottom of the Stream to exist, I guess. I guess he did. Yeah. Guy. Rest in peace, Roger. I think that's all the news. So I've got one bit of news. Oh, brilliant. Red Dwarf's coming back. Oh, excellent. That's been announced like an hour before we started recording. Okay. So that's quite exciting. Free episode run. Filming in October, coming back in 2025. They just so, get together every time they'd need a pension top up. Yeah, thing. why not? And I'm, I'm, I'm bored with that. <laughs> they're e- they're, it's easy, cheap show to make. And that all four of them still seem, seem to love doing it. So why not just keep doing it? Cool. It's been nearly five years. It will be five years okay. since their last one. So yeah, I mean they're all really old now. Not I really I've, old, but they're getting old. I've not seen probably the last couple of reboots. I think I might have vaguely seen one where they ended up in coronation. Yeah, that was the bad one. Yeah. And then <laughs> that was when somebody that was when somebody decided it needed like loads of money spending on it right they even had like a cgi in chip interiors and stuff and it just didn't feel like red dwarf okay and then after that they went back to like cardboard sets and things and it was much better but no it's exciting news they're all coming back for for, i think it was a three episode pickup cool yeah how have you watched anything good at the top of the stream i've only really watched two things what is that? Uh, I, I finished Physical 100 season two oh, on yeah. Netflix because I just I, I got to the point where I felt it was just hanging around, so I was like, right, I'm going to blast through the last half of the season. Yeah, and then didn't realise both the last two episodes are like an hour and a half long, so that's been most of my time. <laughs> right, okay. But I think well, I've talked about how good the show is before. I, I I do think season two was not quite as good as season one. I felt that. I felt that the games were a bit more unfair. They were this season. They seemed very strength based, and I didn't feel like any of the because uh, there's no differentiation between men and women. Right, in this. Everybody everyone just does the just, same. Yeah, but yeah. I, I, I did feel that they there was not much chance for any of the women to get past oh, really? a couple of these, particularly some of the later games skewed to the male um, physique. But the sets and the games are amazing. So the theme of this one is like underground. So the, a lot of the games are like in a mine. That it's all to do with mines and mazes. And so yeah. it's like, it just looks awesome. Um, but yeah, uh, so I finished that. It's a good show. Uh, yeah, it's a slightly preferred the first season. But it's, uh, yeah, if you're into that sort of thing, you'll enjoy it. Sweet. And then the only other thing I've really watched sort of uh, on and off is uh, some episodes of Psych. Just because it's, <laughs> it's turned up on Netflix. Just as a bit of a filler. So that's Sweet. about it for me. How about okay. you? Um, I 
I know we don't. I don't like Jeremy Clarkson. Okay. Yeah, I know you don't like Jeremy Clarkson. I do enjoy Clarkson's Farm. Yeah, me too. It's good. It's yeah. a good show. I've watched the third series of that. Oh, have you? I yeah. so I watched. I should have said this a couple of weeks ago. So I've watched the first half. Yeah, because it. it came out in two parts. Yeah. So I did all four, and then I did the four in a row. The second, so there's eight episodes. Of it's a great show. It's a great show. It really is, and it's so it's well so well put together. Yeah, and it really puts an emphasis on how farming does not work in this country at the minute yeah. and how much money it costs to farm for how little you make the ideas they're just having to come up with and, to try and yeah and the fact that he's got the money to waste yeah. to emphasize and to showcase what other farmers yeah. go through i think it's a really good thing what he's doing because he's like putting farming up there to yeah. ch- tell people how difficult it is by wasting his own money trying to make it work and i really enjoy it i thought it was really good there, there's one episode that's like devastatingly sad <laughs> yeah, I that, think I've seen that yeah, one. Yeah, the, the fourth one. Yeah. Yeah. Four. yeah. That was a, was a tear jerker, that one. But then, yeah, it's great. The, the cast of characters he's built into it are really good. Yeah. I don't necessarily agree with his political views or anything like that, but it's a fun show. I think his, some of his political views have softened somewhat yes. since doing The Farm. Yes, it's, I think It, you're it right, was that whole Meghan Markle thing where he was just, he was just outright racist. Yeah, he was. It was awful. Yeah. Like, he's lucky that, that show's still on. Yeah, that's how he's lucky. He's still got a career. A yeah. lot of people would have been cancelled outright for that. Yeah, but some it do, whatever you do to Meghan Markle doesn't seem to matter. Yeah, it's you don't get cancelled for it. Disgusting. Talking of uh, vile, horrible people, did you see any of this Piers Morgan interview? No, I didn't. I didn't. The baby I, reindeer I didn't no. watch it. No. I had no interest in watching it. I'm, the only thing I heard is like I, apparently he was he was basically gloating that they only charged they only they paid, paid two hundred quid. quid for it. Two hundred quid. So, so he was going on about how Netflix didn't do enough to keep her identity secret, and then he exposes her identity for two hundred quid. Yeah, he's like he's the biggest hypocrite in the whole world. He's unbelievable. No, uh, yeah, I, I've seen clips of it on Instagram and TikTok and stuff, but I haven't watched okay. the whole thing, and I will not watch the whole thing. Um, I have started watching though. Uh, there's a show, new show on Apple called Dark Matter. Okay, have you heard of this? I don't think so. There's, Following the Apple standard of coming out weekly, yeah. which no no other streamers doing nowadays. Uh, so there's only two episodes. The third one came out yesterday. I haven't got to it yet. But the first two were quite good. Um, I don't have a clue what's going on. But <laughs> okay, fine. Cause Apple have got this thing where they seem to want to become the sci-fi streamer. Oh, right. All of their shows are sci-fi shows, if you think about it. It's like Severance, Silo, all these big shows that they're producing. Yeah. They're like science fiction. And this is the same. What's the, what's the premise? This is Joel Edgerton. Um, in, he's a some sort of scientist and he in the first episode gets kidnapped i think i might have read the book of this maybe does he and in the second episode is there a box yes i think i've read the oh, book okay well then you should start watching the show okay <laughs> i don't have apple tv but i, okay. I might may i'm sure i can find yeah so he trial. gets in the first episode he gets kidnapped in the second episode he realizes he's been kidnapped by himself yeah, I've, and... I've read the book. Okay, yeah, cool. yeah. Well, I didn't it's, even know there was a book. Uh, it's the same author who wrote. Oh, give me a second. It's also been a TV show. The one with I was going to say Matt Damon. That's the wrong Matt. Wayward Pines. Oh yeah, it's the same author. Right. Okay. Well, that's weirdly sci-fi and yeah. stuff as well. Okay, Matt I didn't realise it. Matt, Matt Dillon. Dillon. I got his face in my head, but I couldn't think who he was. I didn't. Yeah, I, yes, I've read the book, and he, yes, he so he invents a, a, a Schrodinger's cat, cat type box, yeah. where which two things can to, exist at the same yeah, time. Travel through. Yeah. Okay, I didn't realize even realize it was based on a book. Yeah. Uh, so I've seen the first two episodes of that, and it was really good. Okay. So the third one's out there now. It's coming out weekly. Oh, cool. I don't know how many there are. Oh, that might make me check out Apple TV. You can get free trials for Apple TV yeah, all the yeah, time, yeah. and. There's so much good stuff on there. There really is. I've just got enough to watch already. I know. If you think that you've got silos on there. Yeah. Fantastic show. Severance, great so show. I did have Apple TV, but this is how long ago it was. So Because I've only ever seen the first season of Ted Lasso. That's that's worth the money itself. Yeah. Just Ted Lasso. Then you've got things like Loot, which I've been watching. That's great. Mm. Um, that Eugene Levy's oh, the, Reluctant um, Traveller. Reluctant Traveller. That's yeah. really good. The morning show is supposed to be great. I've not seen it. That's Jennifer Aniston's yeah. thing. There's loads of goods. They seem to go for quality over quantity. Sure. And for some reason, they are. They, they do seem to want to become the sci-fi streamer. Yeah. But I, I think Apple TV is good. Yeah. 
for the quality of what they've got on there is good. There isn't much on there. Sure. But what they've got on there is good. Yeah. Okay. I don't have it every month. I tend to come in and out of it because it's Fair a point. rolling contract. Yeah. So. I think that's it though. I don't think I've watched anything else. Apart from the, the Clownado and the Scrotum that I mentioned. <laughs> I just sent us notice I've said before that I mentioned. I haven't been in the cinema for ages. I do need to get back into that habit. I want to go see the new Planet of the Apes. Yes. I do want to go see yeah. that at some point. I never got to the full guy. I think that's done now. Um, it's not done well. One. No, it hasn't like, done great. Which is really it's, interesting because it's it's been reviewed really well. Yeah. And Ryan Gosling's like on fire. Yeah. But it doesn't seem to have... I feel like the full guy... In terms of like my algorithms and who I see on social media and stuff is like it's the opposite of Avatar Two, right? Because I seem to see loads of posts saying "Been to see the Fall Guy, it was great." Yeah. Yeah, I'm seeing all the reports saying it's bombed. Yeah. No one's gone to see it. Whereas it was the reverse of Avatar, where no one, no I'm one, seeing no one go to see it. But, but it's saying the second biggest movie of all time. <laughs> yeah, it's it's bizarre. You're right. Uh, so I do I do need to get back to back into the habit of cinema going, but. That will come. I'm just. It's just. There's no time. Yeah. There's no time to do anything these days. It's ridiculous. Yeah, but I think that's it. I think that's all I've watched. Okay. This episode seems to work. We, we feel like I feel like we've been talking for ages because we have. Um. There's one thing left to do. I think there is one thing left to do. So. Do you want to do it? Yeah. Sure. So we're uh, we're not claiming the credit for this. No. In in a kind of I can't believe we didn't think of that one earlier. <laughs> uh, we are going to introduce a new feature. We think starting next week. Yes, I think so. So we talked. Uh, last week in one of the news stories about uh, a load of new Netflix games. Netflix games. And I suppose similar to when we used to do Extending the Rod. Oh yeah, where, I forgot where about we, Extended the Rod. Where we do a, we sort of follow a TV show, a sort of mini series. Yeah, for one episode a week. Yeah, we are going to uh, try a different game every week. Yeah. Because why not? Why not? The, the Netflix games is a thing. It's out there now. I think there's nearly a hundred games on we, there now. I've and barely nobody used, knows it exists. Yeah. So I barely use it. You've used it slightly more. Slightly, a little bit. Nobody knows it exists, and I think it's somebody out there needs to showcase that these games yeah. are there, and that's us. <laughs> so we're going to showcase it. So the good thing about Netflix games is there's no in-app purchases. Yeah. There's no like hidden costs. Yeah. Everything is free. All the content in all the games is free. So, so we're just going to pick one. Uh, I've downloaded a couple this week. Pick one every yeah. week. Have a have a go with it for a week Yeah, we're both so, going to play the same one. Come and talk about it next because week. Because we couldn't decide which were the best thing to do. So we're going to go with both play the same one, decide, yeah. compare notes basically. And yeah. Review it and see what we thought. Yeah. See who gets the furthest. See what sort of fun we can have. Okay. Yeah. Are we going to say which game we're doing first? Yes. Okay. I can't remember what it was called. Uh, I you d- picked it. I did. It was just random, just from a couple <laughs> of screenshots. Uh <sighs> It's me. called Kentucky Route Zero. There you go. It's a, I feel like it's a, like a point and click adventure. Yeah, I think so. It's from Annapurna, which uh, I think that's what they're called. Yeah. Annapurna Game Studios, which may have made some really good games in the past. So, I did play the first like two minutes of it. Okay, already. I haven't just yet, to try so. it. I've already got my eye on the next one, which I'll tell you about after we finish recording. But, Brilliant. So yeah, so next week we'll come back to you. We'll talk to you about that name of feature pending. Yes, yeah, so if anybody's got an idea of. Uh, a Ooh. nautical themed Ooh. game, Netflix game. We've name. always been fine in the past. We'll come up with something. Yeah, we'll come up with something. Maybe just we'll just bring back Extending the Rod. <laughs> that's an awful name. Where did we come up with that one? I don't know. That's, that's like the worst name for a feature. <laughs> Sometimes we don't even name the features. <laughs> Real Talk was the best one we ever did. Um, I think that's it. I think we've done a wave. Yeah, I think so. So... What are we watching on the movie show this week? Uh, come back on Thursday to this very feed because we will be talking about Adam's wild card choice for this season. We will indeed. Uh, a Egyptian movie yeah. called The Great Chinese Beans. Correct. Do you, Nick, think we've ever been as bottom of the stream as this film? I think only once or twice. Yeah, not very often, have we? Yeah. Once or twice. This, this is, is this is this is a twenty year old Egyptian movie about China, filmed on a potato, in a completely wrong aspect ratio. I have no idea what they were filming, <laughs> what they were going for there. We've got a all, lot all to I'll talk say about is, in this episode. By, by way of a tease for you to come back and listen on Thursday, is that when I pressed play on this film, yeah, I thought I was watching a cam. Yeah, it's not filmed great. It's like a live action cartoon 
It's almost like live action Tom and Jerry. It's like, it's so hyperactive. It's in your face. It's very loud. Um, we've got a lot to talk about with the great Chinese beans. It's going to be a very f- interesting episode. I, I think, think so. On Thursday. So come back here on Thursday and we'll talk to you about the great Chinese beans. Cheers. Bye.